What's not to love about dragons? They're beautiful, they breathe fire, they fly. Well, I guess if there's a drawback, it's that they're not real, or are they? Today, we're going over the top five reptiles that actually fly. My name's Adam, this is Diamond. You're watching Wicked's Wicked Reptiles, stick around. All right, all right. There are no reptiles that fly, unless you're talking about birds, which are kind of sort of, okay, we're not getting into that. I'm talking about reptiles, the ones you think of, lizards and snakes and things like that. So if they don't actually fly, what do I mean? Well, they kind of like glide. Think of like sugar gliders, but in scale form. And to me, some of these are really cool because anything that can glide, like a quarter of a football field, that's pretty flying-ish to me. So let's just get started with number five, the Paradise Flying Snake. Now as the name intends or illustrates, this thing flies, kind of. Just first of all, they're pretty small. We're talking two to four feet, which is kind of interesting because you think of a flying snake as something that would be massive. But these things are kind of a reasonable size. Now, maybe not the greatest pets, but not a bad pet. I wouldn't say the worst. Uh, but definitely something that you want to watch out for because they have a very interesting diet in that they're mostly lizard and frog eaters, although they'll eat birds and bats out in the wild, which makes sense because you're going to find them mostly in higher canopies in the Southeast Asian jungles. Also, they are rear fang venomous, which is something to always be aware of if you want to keep a snake in captivity. But even if you don't, and this isn't because you want to get one of these, you just think this is an interesting topic, it's pretty cool that the rear fang venomous. I guess the main two things that I wondered is, first of all, how do they fly and why do they fly? So first, the why of the fly. I'm a rapper now. Basically, they fly for two reasons, to escape predation and to be a predator. They're going to prey on things like the number three entry in this list, which we'll get to a little bit later, and they need to be pretty agile, to move quickly through space in order to do this. So if you're trying to flee something or trying to get to something, well, the fastest way is a straight line, right? You can't really do that if you're on a tree over here. What you wanna be at is a tree over here, uh, like to go up, it doesn't make sense, right? You're basically making a backwards parabola. Why did we learn how to graph those in high school? I've never ever done that in real life. Neither here nor there, the how, the interesting part. They have ribs, like all snakes, and they can kind of expand these ribs to a, a spread out their body to about twice the flatness, twice the uh, surface area is the word I'm looking for, so that they can kind of glide from tree to tree or glide from the same tree to a lower branch. But they are truly gliders, uh, less parachute than glidey. And when I say glidey, I mean up to 25 meters. So like think of a quarter of a football field. That's pretty long. That's a pretty big distance. That is a distance that would take you, well, uh, like three seconds to run probably. And they can just kind of whoop. So I guess even if you had them in captivity, you're probably not going to see this uh, type of behavior because I mean, who has, like your enclosure would be, have to be really big, but they are beautiful snakes, absolutely gorgeous, blacks and greens, and just overall, they're a beautiful snake. They would make a decent captive, which is why they're kind of at the beginning of the list, and uh, just something to marvel at. Paradise flying snakes are amazing. Number four, let's just ruin the list with an amphibian right away, Wallace Flying Frog, or Wallace's Flying Frog. Basically named after Alfred R. Wallace, which is a biologist, the first one to describe formally this uh, species of frog, which you're gonna find in a very similar area uh, to the flying snake we just talked about, Southeast Asia. Very interesting, and there are several different types of flying frogs. Maybe we'll talk about a cooler one in a minute. But these ones, they've got this yellow type webbing uh, on their hands, like on their footsies, I guess, right? I've never like, I don't know what they're called technically. Basically they're they're webbed, so like most frogs for swimming, but these guys, they have them for like parachuting and to glide. And these guys will do both. And they'll parachute down to basically almost the forest floor. And they're also going to kind of glide from branch to branch or even tree to tree. And you will find these in the upper and mid canopies of Southeast Asia where they're from in pretty dense jungles. And you can hear them because their call is pretty unique, so that's generally how you'd find them. They kind of remind me, in the way they look sort of, of a Cruzio hyla type tree frog, something that uh, you see in Central America, basically. You got to see one in Costa Rica last month, which are better captive, by the way. If you're looking for a captive that's an amazing looking frog, Cruzio hyla for sure. But we're not talking about that. We're talking about 
frogs that fly slash glide slash parachute. And these guys, uh, you can keep them in captivity, but they're not super common. And their gliding and parachuting behavior, you're not really going to see in captivity unless you had them in a zoo size enclosure. Because again, just like the flying snake, they need a pretty big area in order to demonstrate this ability. These frogs are insect eaters and they are a, a staple, I guess, of a diet of tree snakes, especially colubrids, uh, things like cat eye snakes. So kind of interesting. I think they're cool. You probably think they're cool. Let's move on to something else that's also pretty cool. Number three. The Draco Lizard. This is probably the most dramatic of anything on the list because they look like they have wings. They don't. They've got six elongated ribs that kind of spread out and spread a flap of skin out between their arms and legs or their four are four legs and hind legs, I guess, right? And that kind of gives them a surface area to glide. Very similar to how sugar gliders or flying squirrels would glide by expanding kind of skin between their arms and legs, but these guys actually use ribs in order to do it, unlike their mammal counterparts. These animals are related to other agamids in that area of the world where they're from, which is the same sort of area, or similar area, I should say, to the paradise flying snake. In fact, paradise flying snakes will naturally prey on draco lizards in the wild in parts of where they are from, which is, to me, super duper cool because like they're both on the list and it just works really good for the video, I guess. And also in general, a flying snake eating a flying lizard, how much of the evolution of one or the other or both, come here, don't do this. He was trying to be a dragon too. We get it, I know you breathe fire. I know, it's fine. You're special and we all, we all love you, buddy. What I was trying to say is how much of the evolution of learning to glide, I guess is a better word than flying or more accurate uh, of the snake or the lizard, like what, what came first, the chicken or the egg, I don't actually know, but it's something to think about uh, or that I should have researched before the video. Now these are insectivores, so kind of cool because they will chase flying prey also that truly flies. And also uh, it is suspected that these guys will almost never touch the ground ever, except for when the females lay eggs. The females will lay eggs at ground level, but otherwise there's really no reason for them to come out of the mid canopy to low canopy where they're from, where you're gonna see them in the wild to be on the floor. Kind of like I imagine like a sloth, except for sloths don't lay eggs, they lay poops, which kind of look like eggs sort of. Poop eggs, this is dumb. Can we move on? Number two, one more amphibian. That's the last one on the list, I promise. False Malibur gliding frogs, or like there's a bunch of different names, but that's just the one that I can pronounce the best anyway. You're going to find these in a very tiny area of the Western Ghats in India. So a very tiny area of the world. They are critically endangered, as I see a fruit fly on the glass. Can you? Stop. I don't think you can keep these as a pet. And generally on the channel, I only speak about animals you can keep in captivity. I wanted to talk about this one though, because it's one of the frogs that I've kind of been reading about the longest. I've known about these guys for a long time. I saw them in, uh, it was a book that I found in a library in my public elementary school when I was a kid. And I've always thought they were interesting because of the patterning of them and how they are so critically endangered and have been for a while. And there is some crazy efforts going on by naturalists in India to bring back the species to a more reasonable level of population. And just because you can't keep something in your personal collection doesn't mean it's super awesome and cool and wicked enough to be on the channel. So I hope you enjoy this. I'm not gonna go too far into depth with them, but kind of very similar to the other gliding frog that we talked about or other uh, medium-sized tree frogs. In general, I think they're amazing. I absolutely love tree frogs and something that has this cool adaptation and also the cool patterning, which is very different than a lot of frogs. To me, pretty darn cool. So let's move on to number one, something you can definitely keep in captivity if you want. Number one, the coolest, most dragon looking thing on the list, basilisks. Okay, I'm cheating big time. These things do not fly. And there are other flying animals or gliding animals, where are you going? That I could put on the list, but uh, I, I don't know. This one has a cool adaptation that is kind of like flying on the ground in that people call them the Jesus lizard because they can actually run across water. Even the big ones, which are big, by the way. There are three species. Uh, in Central South America, where they're from, of basilisk. And even the biggest one, the plumifrons, can have this type of running on water effect. They get up on two legs and they run across. They're just so fast, it's amazing. I was lucky enough to see it not on water, but on land with uh, these plumifrons in uh, Costa Rica, which was really cool. So imagining that, but on water instead, just 
anything that gets on two legs and runs at you, I know that frilled dragons do this and every, a bunch of other species too, uh, it's just really cool to me. Even bearded dragons can do it, but no one does it like a basilisk. Plus also, I just wanted to show more of this basilisk that we found in Costa Rica because it's the most ridiculously cool thing. Like, uh, I said in the video, the Costa Rica video, which if you want to see, right, it's like uh, the most cinematic video I've ever made, like the best video we've ever made by far. It's right here if you want to watch it. Uh, but like I said in that video, I really would not have been surprised when I was that close to it and looking at it in detail, if it just started to breathe fire on all of us and fly through the jungle, it looked like an actual dragon. There are a lot of dragon looking animals, but one of the most dragony looking ones ever is for sure a basilisk. So that's it, that's your list. What do you think? Are you mad that I cheated for the last one? Should I have added other things? I know there's geckos and things like that that would work too. Let me know in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you as always. Please, if you don't mind, hit like, subscribe. Those things honestly mean the world to us because it does so much for the channel to push it out to more people uh, and it costs you nothing but a few clicks of your mouse. So thank you guys very much. And as always, the Patreon supporters. You got this video early, you know about extra things that we don't really talk about in this collection, including animals. You get to see all of the builds that we're doing. We're doing tons of bioactive builds, like this one, sneak peek, three, two, one. Early, a whole bunch of things. And for as little as a dollar a month, you can be part of the Patreon club too. I'd really appreciate it. I really appreciate you guys. And uh, that's it. Because I do videos twice a week, that means that I'll see you on Monday.